let's start with object detection. And uh, in particular, yes, let's start with two stage detectors. So we are gonna have two sections. One is gonna be about two stage detectors and the other one is about one stage detectors. And we're gonna see the benefits, basically the pros and cons of each one of these approaches toward solving object detection problems. But first of all, what is object detection and how do you measure uh, an algorithm's performance? How do you measure whether one algorithm is better than the other or vice versa? So for object detection, you probably have seen these figures or plots like this. There is an image and then your detector needs to be able to put a bounding box around the ship or the boat and say it's, uh, it's confident or it's 61.74% confident that there is a boat in that box and it's uh, 86 point something percent confident that there is a person. Now, how do you measure its performance? We are gonna learn about how to design algorithms to solve that problem, which is not an easy problem at all. But let's say, let's assume you have a detector. How do you measure its performance? So let's pick the boat for now. We are gonna do this per class. So let's choose the boat and that's gonna be the green box and that's gonna be your ground truth. So this is what you have in your test data. And these are your boxes. These are the ground truth boxes. And then your algorithm is predicting the red ones and with their corresponding confidence. And it's gonna do it for different images. So a second image is gonna have a bounding box here, a ground truth bounding box here for the boat. And then it's gonna do the prediction. The algorithm is gonna give you the red boxes and etc. for image three, image four, image five, image six, and image seven. And now we are just gonna give these a name. Let's say this is A, B, C, detection F, detection D, detection E, etc. Because we want to be able to uh, understand in what this metric is doing exactly. Okay, so far so good. Now we need to define for this problem. So there is a question from Theodore. The number of and type of objects are both random. Uh, what do you mean? So they're not all pictures of a guy in a boat, right? Uh, for now, we pick the boat. We are gonna worry about the guy later on. And we are gonna worry about other objects later on. For now, let's focus on one class and the class is gonna be boat. Okay. Let's try to detect all of the boats. Okay. And define our metric for the boat. And then you are gonna have 21 measurements, 21 metrics. You're gonna report the average over all of your classes. Okay. So let's pick only the boat for now. And our detector, all of these red ones correspond to the boat. We are trying to find the boat. Okay, now the question is, what is a true positive for this problem? What is a false positive? What is a false negative? And what is a true negative? So a true positive is gonna be a correct detection of a ground truth bounding box. And we're gonna say what correct means. We're gonna define it exactly. But if you have the concept of correct, then a correct detection of a ground truth bounding box is gonna be a true positive. For instance, maybe this one is a true positive maybe this one is a true positive because there is a ground truth and we are detecting it to some accuracy but we are detecting something that's going to be a true positive what is a false positive if you detect a non-existent object like here that's a false positive your algorithm is a, is giving you a box and it's telling you that uh, there should be a boat here but there isn't any boat over there and uh, that's going to be a false positive or a misplaced detection. For instance, this one is misplaced. It's trying to detect a boat, but it's misplaced. That's a false positive. What is a false negative? If there is a ground truth bounding box that is not detected. For instance, this case, it's not detected by the algorithm and that's gonna be a false negative. And what happens to true negative? This is a question for you. How many true negatives do we have? Infinite. Say it again. Infinite. Is it just like any possible sized box? So yes, exactly. There are infinite objects or infinite locations, infinite boxes in any image that you shouldn't detect. So you cannot define a true negative result in the object detection. Therefore, whatever metric that you want to come up with should only use 
the definitions of true positive, false positive, false negative. You are not allowed to use true negative because there are infinitely many boxes that your algorithm can correctly not identify, okay? So we are bound to use these concepts, true positive, false positive, false negative. And we know that we can define, first of all, what does correct mean? How do you say that a detection is correct? You're gonna use the Jacquard index or intersection over union of two boxes. If you have your predicted bounding box, which is the red one, and a ground truth bounding box, the green ones, you can compute the intersection and divide it by the union. And that's gonna give you a number to work with. You define a threshold. If your intersection over union is bigger than that threshold, you're gonna say that that's a correct uh, detection. Otherwise it's incorrect. If it's less than T, it's incorrect. For instance, this is probably bigger than your threshold. This is less than your threshold. So this is incorrect, this is correct, okay? Now we are gonna use true positive, false positive, false negative. And we know that precision and recall are gonna do just that for us. So what is the exact definition of precision? It's the true positive divided by all of the detections, whether they are true positives or false positives. These are all of the detections that your algorithm makes, and that's gonna give you the precision. And what is recall? It's gonna be your true positives divided by all of the ground truth. So let's see an example. And now you're gonna see why we named this A, B, C, D because of this table. You're gonna write down your detections. You're gonna sort them by confidence. So these are the confidence in a descending order. For instance, detection R is here and it's 95% confident. So we are gonna sort them according to their confidence. And now we want to find what is precision, what is recall. For R, this is a true positive. So it's detecting it according to our threshold. It's gonna be one true positive, zero false positive. This is accumulated true positive, and this is accumulated false positives. And our precision is gonna be one divided by one plus zero. It's gonna be one over one. That's gonna give you precision of one according to this formula. And for recall, you need to count all of your ground truth in your data. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 green boxes. These are your ground truth. And one divided by 15 is gonna give you this number. That's gonna give you your recall. Now you move to your Y and uh, detection Y, I cannot find it. It's here, it's 95%. That's the confidence. It's a false positive. The total true positives is gonna remain one. The total accumulated false positives is gonna increase by one. One plus one is gonna give you a two. These are all of your detections so far. And the true positives is gonna be one divided by two is gonna give you a half. That's your precision. And the recall didn't change. So you do that exercise for all of these detections across your entire data set and all of your images. And then you create a plot, recall versus precision. And you just plot them. For instance, this point R, you had a recall value of slightly less than 0 0.1, that was 0 0.06, and it had a, a precision of one, and then you can plot all of them. The problem is that sometimes your precision is going down, sometimes it's going up, sometimes going down, up, so it's not uniform. And we want to find the area under the curve. That's gonna give you your metric. And that metric is taking into account the confidence because we are sorting our detections by confidence and is gonna take into account uh, the precision and recall. So this is one version of the metric. You could have multiple different types of metric. One metric is that you're gonna divide the interval from zero to one, and you're gonna divide it into intervals of size 0 0.1. So it's gonna be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. up until one. It's gonna give you 11 points, and then you're gonna average out the, the precision values. But then it's gonna be an interpolated precision value. And how do you do the interpolation? You just take the maximum of the precision values to the right of that point. For instance, if your point is 0 0.1, you're gonna take this value and interpolate it here. And this is exactly what we are doing here. 
for zero, you just copy the value to the right, the maximum value to the right of this point, 0 0.1, you copy the value to the right of this point, uh, same thing here, you just copy the maximum value. Now this one is monotonic, and you can just average out those values. It's gonna give you a single number, and that's gonna give you how good this object detector was for predicting both and detecting both in all of your images. Alternatively, you can live with these values with the exact locations so that you don't have to do interpolation to the left and just try to find the integral. This is just finding the area under the curve, but then still you need to find the maximum. And this is what you're doing for average precision all. You pick your points, for instance, this point, and then copy the maximum value from the right. So now you don't have 11 equally spaced points anymore. These are just your X locations, your recall locations are gonna be what uh, your data is giving you. So this is for one class. If you want to report a number for the entire uh, classes, let's say you have 21 classes in Pascal VOC, just average them out. That's gonna give you mean average precision for this algorithm. And now you have a metric to be able to compare algorithms versus algorithms. So is this clear? Any questions? So the question is why can't you just find the uh, area under the curve without approximating it? Uh, the problem is that you want your precision to be a monotonically decreasing function. You can find the area under the curve here, but then what's gonna happen up here? Should you subtract it? Should you add it for your metric? So it's not clear. That's why you want it to be monotonic. Any other questions? So the thing is, uh, is this the best metric that you can come up with? The answer is probably not. And a better question is, is there a perfect metric for measuring the quality of object detectors? And the answer is no. This is not a perfect metric, but, and why is it not perfect? Because if you look at the confidence for R and Y, they are equal. So how do you break the tie? And it's gonna have a significant effect on your uh, total number in the end that you're reporting. If you put Y here and R here, things are gonna be very different. So it's not a perfect metric, but uh, uh, we are doing our best to come up with a metric to be able to compare algorithms and algorithms. So it's not a trivial problem to solve. So is everything clear? Okay, perfect.